Pay attention now. I've got a prelude to the message. Sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, prelude to the message of sowing and reaping part two. Now, some of you are going to have to give that some thought, what I just said, but here it is. The story is told of um, two Scotsmen. They, they were really Norwegian, but since I'm Norwegian, I'm putting this back on the Scots. And they immigrated to California. They wanted to have in their new home some reminder of their homeland. So one of them took a thistle, the national emblem of Scotland. The other took some bees, honeybees. Years passed on. Fields for such a long distance that they had cursed with thistles. They couldn't get rid of the thistles. But the forest had all kinds of honeybees swarming around, and honey was abundant. Little did those two Scotsmen know, or even think, of what would grow out of their selections, either for good or for evil. They just didn't think about it. The seemingly insignificant acts of man mean much to future generations. Each choice that you make brings a consequence. If you make wise, God-honoring choices, then you will experience good consequences. If you make sinful, disobedient choices, that you'll then experience not such good things and negative consequences. The way our selected text puts it is that you will reap what you sow. Sowing and reaping. Positive or negative. It has both connotations. If you sow good seeds, you reap good things. If you sow honesty, you will reap trust. If you sow goodness, you're going to reap friends. If you sow humility, you will honestly reap greatness. If you sow perseverance, you will ultimately reap victory. If you sow consideration, you're going to reap harmony amongst those around you. If you sow hard work, you're going to, you're going to reap success. If you sow forgiveness, you will reap reconciliation. If you sow patience, you're going to reap improvement in your life and those around you. If you sow faith, you're going to reap miracles in your life. If you sow to the Spirit, you're going to reap life eternal, everlasting things. Now, on the other hand, if you sow bad things, you will reap bad things. If you sow dishonesty, you will reap distrust. This reminds me of our election that we have going on, huh? <laughs> Why would you expect anybody to trust you if you sow dishonesty? Wow! If you sow selfishness, you reap loneliness. If you sow pride, you're going to reap ultimately destruction according to the scriptures. If you sow jealousy, you will reap trouble. You sow laziness. You reap stagnation. Mediocrity. You sow bitterness. You reap isolation. Who wants to be around somebody who's bitter and negative and nasty? You sow gossip. You reap enemies. You sow worries, you reap wrinkles. <laughs> you sow sin, you reap guilt. Now I submit to you that not only 
Do you reap what you sow, but you reap more than what you sowed? See, so that's good or bad, huh? You sow bad, you're going to reap more than just bad. You sow good, you're going to reap more than just good. And we know that from the farmer, and we've heard that. He sows, takes a, one seed of corn and plants it, and you get a stalk, and on that stalk it's going to have two or three or four ears, I believe, on it. And if you get two ears on there, there's going to be approximately 1,600 kernels on it from one seed. With that in mind, it's imperative that we sow the right seeds. Amen. Amen. End of the prelude for the message. Okay. The message for us, personally, as I said last week, personally, as a church, and as a country, is sowing and reaping. Part 2, Galatians 6, I'm going to read the scriptures. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please the sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, the things of the Spirit... From the Spirit will reap eternal life. Verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. Don't raise your hand. Please, don't raise your hand. Has anybody <coughs> really gotten tired of doing good? Any of you gotten tired? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I'm so tired of doing so many good things for people. Yeah, I don't think so. You must be getting tired from something else. Nonetheless, don't become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, the Bible says, hmm, you will reap the harvest, providing you don't give up. That's what it says. Quick review. Last week I told you about jogging in a jug. Jogging in a jug was that folk remedy for high cholesterol. A couple of ounces a day of apple juice and something else, and apple cider vinegar, cleans your arteries out, as slick as a whistle type thing. And I said, wouldn't that be great if it worked? Because then we could dispense with all the nonsense of going to the gym and doing yoga and getting on the treadmill and all that stuff that creates such sweat to get into shape when I could just drink this thing and all those physical problems would go away and I would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger with my abs or or I'd look like Sean Hoffman. <laughs> Sean's abs are probably, and there's no doubt about it, they're better than Arnold Schwarzenegger's. Oh, yeah. Airbrush. And so I would reap Sean Hoffman's abs. <laughs> and I didn't even have. <laughs> My wife said, I'm believing for that. <laughs> In short, whether it's spiritually, Physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, what we're constantly trying to do is repeal the law of sowing and reaping. Center that connection between actions and consequence. And it isn't going to work. <laughs> There's no way around it. It's not just in eating and drinking, but in everyday life. If I could just be that person that puts that dollar in the slot machine and I win that million dollar jackpot, wouldn't that be just awesome? No more going to the office. No more having to spend time going to school, sacrificing and make these investments. People, there's no shortcut. No shortcut to exercise if you want to stay fit. No shortcut to staying fit. You're going to have to eat right. You're going to have to exercise. That's it. Amen. There's no shortcut to earning money. There's no shortcut to growing spiritually. No shortcut. No shortcut to building character. No shortcut to that relationship that you want to have with God. All of these ruled by the law of sowing and reaping. It's a part of the moral fabric of the universe because God created the universe. The law cannot be overturned by drinking juice. It can't be repealed by winning the lotto. And so, the way of wisdom is not to war against 
the law of sowing and reaping. But to understand it, to live by it, and then to benefit from it. So the scripture says, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. What's Paul's first point? Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. What is Paul telling us here? What he's saying is that you're not going to get away with it. That's basically it. Sooner or later, you will reap what you've been sowing. The harvest is coming. See, when we talk about the harvest coming, most of us are smiling. I can't wait for the harvest to come. But some of you are gone, oh, wait a minute here, wait a minute here. Everything we sow eventually bears fruit. It's the law. If what we're sowing is bad, then your fruit of the harvest will not be good. Job 4.8 says, As I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble, reap it. Hosea 10, 12. Sow for yourself righteousness and reap the fruit of unfailing love as you sow righteousness. James 3, 18. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Sowing and reaping. Deed and consequence. Cause and and effect, action, and reaction. Now, let me ask you a question. And when I ask you questions in church, I expect you to ponder these, either now or later. What are you sowing in your life right now, today? What are you sowing? What did you spend, how did you spend your, your day yesterday? Are you giving any thought to what you're going to harvest from the seeds that you're planting right now. I'm just saying, I'm just asking, are you giving it any thought? That's all. Are you seeking to please God? Or are we just so busy with everything? Sowing seeds of obedience and service. Are we doing that? Or are we... Sowing seeds of sin that produce shame. What a word, shame. Our words and our actions and decisions are more significant than we possibly know by that illustration of the Scotsman. They echo through our lives and the lives of everyone we meet. They honestly reverberate out into eternity. That's what sound waves continue to do. They bounce and they go. What are you sowing in your children's life? What are you sowing in your kids' lives? What are you teaching them? Better question, are you teaching them? I had a very, I'll just say I had a relative came to me one time and said, well, I'm not going to teach my kids anything about religion because I want them to make their own choice. I said, I've heard stupider things, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I want to tell you something. You ever had that thought run through your, your mind? You're a moron. I mean, that's just plain and simple. I think I'll choose to be a Satanist. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Most of those people that became that is because their parents said, well, I'm just going to let them choose whatever they want. Let them figure it out. You know why on earth? You don't let them figure out anything else. You're teaching them everything else. But with the most important thing, you're just going to hold back. You want me to tell you why? Because of the responsibility and accountability that you have to have. i got news for you. The eyes of the kids are on you, Mom and Dad. To this day, I still have to behave myself. I'm not kidding. My kids are all grown. I kept thinking years ago, man, you know, one day 
they'll all be grown and I won't be responsible. And I can just let my hair down a little bit. Nobody will know. See, and I didn't even say what that meant. I really meant let my hair down. <laughs> Over my kids to the, they're still watching me. I still gotta behave myself. It's also a wonderful thing when you're living right. You can help them at any time. What a beautiful thing. Amen. So many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I ask, what kind of example are we setting? You know that scripture in Corinthians, you follow me as I follow Christ, and that means to be a carbon copy. You follow me because I'm going to be a carbon copy of Jesus, to be Christ-like in everything. And basically, then, because our goal is to be Christ-like, and we can have the mind of Christ, and we know what the scriptures say, and then we take it in, and then we act that way. We behave that way we be that example to others that's serving God what are you sowing in your children's life you got to think about that how are you preparing them to walk with Jesus see see for when we got saved we had we didn't have any kids we felt once we got saved could have kids that was that was one of the decisions that we consciously made having six kids there was no consciousness involved with that we just never quite figured it all out but before we had kids we got saved and now we knew we could for us have children because we were confused trying to figure this whole thing out called life but what we decided is that our kids will serve God. And we quoted the scripture in Joshua, for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Period. Never deviated from that all of our years. We made sacrifices along the way to make sure that our kids serve God. That was number one. Our relationship with God, wasn't money, wasn't work, wasn't any of those things. Our relationship with God each other and our kids will serve God what better way will you give them an opportunity in this life than not to have to make all the dumb mistakes that we made are you preparing them to walk with Jesus these are just questions don't get mad at me what are you sowing in your own spiritual life? What are you sowing on a daily basis in your own spiritual life? It's just a question. Are you reading the Bible? It's just a question. I remember I, I asked somebody one time. I said, are you reading your Bible? And the person responded, you don't ask me that, you self-righteous so-and-so. Well, excuse me. I, I just asked a question. Well, it's the way you do everything. You're always putting everybody down. All right. Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you cultivating that relationship with God that you should be cultivating? Somebody said that if you raise your voice up and down, it means something, okay? Or are you neglecting your spiritual life? See, because, you know, we consciously get up and do things. We illustrated that, I think, on Wednesday or last week. Get out, roll out of bed. There's a routine we do, all do, whatever it might be. Or just moan and groan and push the button on the machine if it's not automatic. Right, hang on, don't talk until I get my coffee. I mean, we all got something going. But I mean, it's the first thing you do when you hit the ground, like we talked about, put on the full armor of God. Thank you, Jesus, for this awesome day. God, 
what I, I know you're gonna give me some divine appointments today you're setting them up right now and I'm gonna be able to share Jesus with somebody or help somebody or get somebody out of a desperate situation but I'm watching I'm looking who can I help today what kind of harvest are you expecting well aren't you thinking about it someone's gonna go ding 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 it's harvest time and others are gonna go oh and some are gonna go hallelujah I've been waiting for this harvest time are you sowing seeds to produce a strong faith are you sowing seeds to produce joy in your life has anybody ever said why are you so crabby are you, are you sowing seeds to, to reap peace in your life? Are you expecting a harvest of flowers and fruits and vegetables or a, a harvest of weeds? Or you're not just thinking about it, just bumping your way like the old pinball. Bing, 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 bing. What are you sowing in your relationship with your spouse? Criticism, neglect, disapproval. You are, then you shouldn't be surprised if those seeds produce the harvest of thorns and thistles. But we can sow seeds of encouragement, seeds of praise seeds of attention and the harvest of those seeds is love how many of you married folk you crawl into bed at night you just sit there and you kind of just cuddle for you a little bit and you go isn't this just awesome raise your hand how many of you do that See, you, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. The days behind you, you get to, and you, because you don't even have to say anything. But you sowed seeds of love during the day, of encouragement and those things. It's a peaceful feeling. Now, you know, I mean, you could be, uh, you don't have to be, I'm just using the married couple, then there's all, so many ways singles can sow seeds and feel the same thing. How are you spending your time? How you spend, I'm just asking questions. How are you spending your money? What's filling your mind? What do you fill your mind with? What kind of seeds are you planting in those areas? What kind of fruit are you expecting? All right, here's the key. We don't have a choice as to whether the law of sowing and reaping is going to apply in our lives. We don't have a choice. Because the Bible says that a man reaps what he sows. It is a fact, it, it is a law. We don't have a choice whether the seeds we plant are going to be, I mean, we don't have a choice whether the seeds we planted are going to bear fruit. Because they're gonna bear fruit. That's the whole idea. And we don't have the choice or the option of harvesting good fruit without first having planted fruit. See, that's the definition of stupid. We keep doing the same thing that's not producing good fruit, but we expect it to produce good fruit this time. But that's stupid. Because you're going to have to change. And you're going to have to plant seeds that are good in order to produce good fruit. So if something's not working, it's not complicated. We have to change. I gotta change something. I don't know what it is, but I can certainly give you a start. The only choice that we have is the kinds of seeds we're going to plant to reap a harvest that we want. Now, why am I going so slow and beating this thing? Because I really don't think that too many of us really give much thought to this 
I think we go on autopilot Monday through Friday, and then we clean up the house on Saturday and Sunday, and some go to church, and some stay at home, and some try to go fishing. The choices you are making today, the actions that you're taking today with respect to your relationship with God, your family, your marriage, your children, your time, your money, these will all bear fruit. Either good fruit that will bring joy or bad fruit that will bring a heartache and sorrow. You have to decide which will it be. There's a decision to make. Wait a minute, John. I just heard somebody say that. Wait a minute. I've been sowing good seeds all my life. And it doesn't look all that good to me. We do our best to obey God. I pray, John. I read the Bible. I try as often as I can to speak the truth, to seek peace with others. I really do. I have been faithful to my wife for all these years. I love my kids. I tithe. And yet, things just don't go right all the time. I, there's conflict in my life. There's, there's bitterness in my life. There's angry words that pass through my life. There's betrayal. There's tears. There's sorrow. What gives? I thought that if I continued to sow good seeds, I'd receive a good harvest. That's a good question. That's a good question. That's not bad. So let's finish the scripture. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please the sinful nature, going to reap from the reap destruction. The one who sows to the to the Spirit is going to reap eternal life. But then it says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time you'll reap a harvest if you do not give up. That's right. Woo! Wow! So what do we see? Paul says, don't become weary. He spoke about reaping a harvest at a proper time. Why? Because sometimes the harvest doesn't come and we expect it. Or when we desire it. I've said so many times, now would be nice, God. Now would be nice. Sometimes the harvest takes months. Sometimes the harvest takes years. Sometimes the harvest takes decades. Your children, you may say something that you forget all about, but it sticks with them all their lives for years afterwards. Sometimes the harvest comes too late for us to see it. Moses died before entering the promised land. Sometimes we're unaware of who we've influenced. The fruit appears when we're not around to see it. And in some cases, the harvest doesn't come till after this life altogether. And our reward is, at that point in time, hopefully, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. Here's another thing. Not only does the fruit sometimes appear at a time we don't expect, sometimes it appears in a form that we don't quite recognize. Hmm. Sometimes the result of obedience is not just an improvement in our circumstance, but a strengthening of our faith a building of our character. God in his wisdom defines what is good fruit. Even though we may be looking for something else, he knows what he's doing. So what should we be doing? Should we just keep doing whatever we feel like and hoping for the best? garden treated like that would end up producing weeds. Man, you know, Michelle and I, the last couple of years, we've been planting at our house, planting flowers and stuff. Man, and today was the, I wonder, 
David and Sharon, they've been, Mimble's been planting for years because that, he has a jungle over his house. Because I never thought you could grow anything in Big Bear. And it's just been an awesome thing. And this year, things just grew like you couldn't believe. It was just a great year. And I just go out and marvel at how awesome God is. Things are growing. But at the same time, there was a whole bunch of weeds in the garden. You know what was really dumb? I go, Michelle, which one of these is the weed and which one's the flower? I mean, I just don't know anything. I don't quite have a green thumb. But you let that garden grow, the weeds will take over. So you have to purposefully sow right things, cultivate, take care of. We need to reflect on how we're living. I know I do. We need to reflect, how am I living? You know what God may say to you? You're doing awesome. Keep going. Keep plugging away. He may say, well, you know what? Let's just take care of this, this, and this. Why don't you be a little nicer to your wife? Why don't you work a little harder? I don't know. I'm just saying, let's just ask some questions. We need to consider what kind of seeds we're planting. We need to work diligently to plant, plant the right seeds. Put some thought into this. So that we don't have disappointing disappointment when it comes to harvest time. You know what it says in Proverbs 20, a sluggard does not plow in season. So at harvest time, he looks, but he doesn't find anything because he didn't plant the seeds. We need to place our trust and confidence in God. It's by his power and grace, not because of our effort, that good fruit comes. Finally, what about the bad seed that we've already sown? sins we've already committed, the months and the years that have been wasted. Do I have to endure the consequences of all the things that I have done wrong? And all the mistakes that I have made? And I want to tell you something. The list is long. Maybe you're experiencing that right now. Maybe you're suffering the consequences of some past actions. Maybe you're even reaping the fruit of someone else's wrong choices. The important thing to realize is that there is a higher law that supersedes the law of sowing and reaping. It's amazing, isn't it? way God planned it. And that's the law of love and the law of mercy and the law of grace. That's the promise of forgiveness. Wow. Right now, Father, forgive me. God, eternal life. Wow. To all who place their faith in Jesus. In Christ, the punishment for our sins is removed. Our guilt is completely erased. Wow. God's word says, mercy triumphs over judgment. Now let me close. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. Don't be deceived to the reality that God's word is true. But it does require you to believe it. And it requires you to apply it in your life. Don't be deceived to the reality that there is consequences to actions that do not line up with the Word of God. Don't be deceived the fact that we are personally responsible for our relationship with Jesus and others. Don't be deceived to the fact that if we sow bad seeds, whether it is in a marriage with kids or finances, work, whatever, you will reap a harvest. And the harvest is coming. But don't be blind to the fact that love and grace, the mercy of God, can supersede any and all bad seeds that have been sown. 
No fear. The Bible says there is therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ. So the question now is, are you in Christ today? Give the Lord a praise, folks.